Well, Good Friday. Fathers. And lovers of the leaf. Hope everybody's doing good. I have been out of commission for the last few days. I tell you, I've been been home sick for oh, I don't know, three or four days. It seemed like I, I don't know if I had the flu or what. I never did go to the doctor, but I'm feeling a little better this week. And uh, uh, just certainly had the fever and chill, and aching and hurting, and it hung on. And, but I'm feeling a little better. Uh, uh, <laughs> pretty much been in the bed for the last two or three days and just kind of getting up and getting out a little bit. I've got to get out tomorrow and try to handle some things. But And this old yard is uh, about knee high on the, the bahia grass that comes up. A little housekeeping. I'm smoking my little... Uh, uh, Erickson uh, Dublin that my son bought me for uh, my birthday a couple of a couple of years ago, <clears throat> and in it I am smoking some uh, CAO Black that was gifted to me uh, the other day by uh, Stephen uh, Texas Cobb smoker and. I got to say that uh, I've never been a huge fan of CAOs. I haven't really given them a chance, maybe, but I got to tell you, this CAO blank blew me away. This is some good stuff. And uh, the description on it is a deep base of rich black Cavendish tobaccos are complemented by a touch of flu cured Virginia's. And golden Cavendish, then topped with a sweet, luxuri luxuriant recipe of black raspberry and dark chocolate flavors. Perfect combination of rich richness, aroma, and balance. And you taste both the black raspberry is prominent, and it tastes good, as well as the um, the chocolate. But it's not super duper strong on the chocolate. But it's definitely sweet and. Uh, you know, that raspberry comes through. And I don't even like raspberries, but I like this. We just got out of the shower and got holes down. My hair is still wet. Uh, but I like to say I'm feeling a little better, just weak as a devil. I hadn't been out of the house. I hadn't been been around any excitement. Don't have a lot to tell, but um, thought I would stop in and say hello, a quick hello, and let everybody know that I'm still kicking, <laughs> at least halfway anyway. But uh, I hadn't even felt like watching a lot of videos. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch some tonight. I did have a, a pretty good conversation with Calendar a while ago. We talked for probably 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, he's like uh, Pipe Pappy and uh, uh, some others. We get together every now and then, and we don't talk often. But when we do, we we catch up. Of course, tonight's topic was politics, and, and uh, that gets um, get into that. And of course, we we are very very similar on our political beliefs, and. Uh, uh, it it, it um, makes for an interesting conversation. But um, it, I did enjoy it less. I sure did, buddy. I smoked a couple of good CAO cigars, but like I say I've never really cared much for their for their pipe tobacco. But now Les told me Eileen's Dream was a good one. He's not a huge aromatic smoker, y'all know. He smokes a lot of uh, Navy Flakes and that kind of thing. And I think he's a big uh, McBaron. Uh, I don't know if he's a 
uh, Old Dark Fired, I think, is one of his favorites. But anyway, he was telling me Eileen's dream is a good one, and he's he's not a big aromatic guy. But I got to watch his video um, on his government credit card rant. He, he discussed it briefly. If y'all ain't had a chance, go watch it. And it's about the government selling our uh, our Visa and MasterCard, selling our our um, buying habits information to uh, doctors and hospitals. But if I feel like it tomorrow, I'm going to try to make the trek over to Governor's. I hadn't, I hadn't been there since, well, I went last Saturday for a little while, and uh, of course, and then we had our, we went to dinner mm -hmm. Saturday night, but I'm going to try to go, try to get over there tomorrow if I can, if I feel like it, and try to smoke a pipe bowl or two, and uh, there's a new black Cavendish over there that he's got that I want to try. I think it's McClellan. And, of course, get a couple of new sticks. I think there's um, some new Tatawahes over there and that kind of thing. And then there's two or three Pepperdomo Champagne. And I've got one of those left, so I'm, I'm going to re-up on that a little bit. <coughs> so, on you know, a couple of those maybe, but... I did win a couple of bids on CigarsBids.com, uh, another Grand Habana sampler, and then a Gurkha Beast, I think 10 or 12 <coughs> of those. And after looking at that Grand Habana package, I, 20 that I got the other day, that was a fair deal. It wasn't no, it wasn't an outstanding deal. So. You gotta really watch, you know, what you get. I want some things, but occasionally they'll have up some pipe tobacco on cigar bids. So y'all go check it out. Occasionally they'll 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 throw throw something in there, you know. But I haven't eaten a bite all day. I'm just going to go fix this sandwich. It's 9 o'clock here. And uh, I think I'm going to go fix a sandwich. I had my wife stop at the market up the street and um, on the way in. And I wanted to have a taste for some salami. And believe it or not, they were out of salami back there in the deli where they slice it. So she called me and I said, well, just get some bologna. <laughs> uh, I just was in the mood for a sandwich and... Uh, Bologna will do. And I'm by bologna, you know. I, I've been kind of having a taste for salami or bologna either morning and just kind of been craving it. Not in the last few days. I hadn't really craved anything. But uh, before I got down, I had been, and I don't keep a lot of bologna here because I'm the only one that eats it. My wife and Emily, you know, they eat turkey and ham and that kind of thing. And uh, if you could get by the deli meats, and, uh, you know, I like the old salami and bologna. And every now and then I get to want me a bologna sandwich, and I'll go buy a half a pound of it or whatever and have it sliced, enough to make four or five sandwiches out of, and, and I'll eat that until I eat my, you know, a couple, three days on it until I, and then I'm done for a while. And uh, I would keep it here all the time, if because they keep ham and turkey here for, for sandwiches, but we're bad about here. We'll buy a loaf of bread and a doggone thing will go get stale before we use it, so, because we're, we're not home a lot. We're at the restaurant. We bring leftovers home from there, and um, so we just, you know, we throw away so doggone much of it. She bought a loaf of that wholesome bread, and, and wholesome used to be the Cotton Bakers here. They had their own bakery here in town for years and years and years, and down on Jackson Street in Monroe. 
And when I was a kid, they were, they took us through Borden's Milk had a milk dairy processing thing right beside it. Wholesome Bread or Cotton Bakers had a big bread bakery there. And man, we used to get that bread fresh here in town. You could feel of it. It just feels so soft, you know. And, and you could actually, when you open the bag, it still smelled fresh. And then you go down there. We went on a, on a field trip. I was about in the fourth grade, I think. And we, we went down there to the milk thing. Now, the milk deals, it didn't, the smell of it just wasn't good. But the smell of that bakery, that fresh bacon bread, oh. And they gave us all a fresh little miniature loaf. And it was hot out of the oven. And, and you talk about good. <clears throat> and we would get it almost that fresh. I mean, when they would deliver it to the stores that morning, they would bag it sometime during the night. And it would be shipped to the store. Time the stores open. I mean, you could walk in a supermarket at 9 o'clock and buy bread that was less than four or five hours old, you know, just being, and it would just be so soft. And, and, and like I say, the, even the, the smell of it would be so fresh. And now there, I think this bread's coming out of either Alexandria, Louisiana, or which is 100 miles south of here, or Shreveport, which is 100 miles to the west. They've closed this uh, factory here. And it's, by the time we get it, I mean, crap, it's, you know, it's a day old, seemed like by then. You know, it's not a day old, but it's certainly not as fresh as we used to get it. Now, Mrs. Baird's, they're out of Texas somewhere, and they've came over here and really, really uh, done well in the market. And we always bought the uh, the Wonder Buns at the restaurant. We, we bought the Texas Toast, and something happened with that plant, too. Well, on the Hostess deal, Hostess bread deal all um, Twinkies and the Hostess cakes all cratered. We, ours was coming out of that division and our uh, hamburger buns. And what they're selling now, the texture on them is um, almost got a gummy taste. And I've been talking to my wife about it. We're gonna we're gonna look at our grocery company. Of course, we have to buy it by the case. And uh, of course, we go through enough of buns. It wouldn't be a and they're all toasted, so it wouldn't be a big issue. But um. And they're actually about three cents cheaper buying them through the grocer. But I want to try them first. They're supposed to be sending us out a sample bag of them and, and try. But the, the texture of these buns are horrible. You know. but anyhow, well, I've sat here and rambled enough about nothing. But uh, I'll try to get back on tomorrow, the next day or two, when when uh, get where we can. And... Um, We'll catch up with y'all a little later. And as always, thank y'all for watching. And God bless you.